The great pathologist Rudolf Virchow analyzed the first findings of the Neanderthal man from which all those heavy brow pictures came from. The Neanderthal specimen he examined had rickets and arthritis which caused some of the unique Neanderthal features that have become very famous. Those heavy foreheads and heavy eyebrows. Well, he had rickets and arthritis. But this famous uh, pathologist report was ignored. And for 44 years later, finally, his findings were released. And they found out that the way they were depicting Neanderthal man was totally erroneous. And even though that were the case, Neanderthal reconstruction at the Field Museum of Natural History in Chicago was shown to be false and highly misleading, meaning that they had represented the Neanderthal man in a way that he didn't look like that. It was simply that the one a specimen that was examined early on had rickets and arthritis and... Uh, highly misleading, but it still took another 20 years for this renowned institution to, to correct its display of Neanderthal man. That's why the impression still goes on. Well, they must be half, half, half ape, half man, half man. They must be that missing link. They're not. They were fully human. And, and living in caves doesn't mean they're, they're, not, they're not human. There are many people today around the world who live in caves. Uh, Osama bin Laden. There are many that live in caves today. It doesn't mean they're not human. That has nothing to do with their humanity, so we need to remember that. In the Neanderthal Man summary, the find was heralded around the world, a semi-erect subhuman. It turned out to be a real human remains who suffered a severe case of rickets, vitamin D deficiency, no missing link. Java Man, let's go through these quickly. In Java, uh, 1892, Indonesia, in the land island of Java, found by a, a Frenchman, Eugene Dubois, he found a skull and a leg bone 50 feet away from the skull, 50 feet apart. You can see the skull there. That's what he found. Uh, the top of the skull, that's all he found, and a leg bone 50 feet away. Uh, pictures came out like this. This is what he must have looked like. That was from the top of the skull and a leg bone. Pictures like this were drawn. You can imagine how hungry evolutionists must have been to make these kind of biological jumps and depict that organism like that. Well, the Java man bottom line, for 30 years, Dubois didn't reveal that he'd also found two human skulls in the same general location and the same level of the gravel deposit. So there's a problem. If the Java man is half human, half ape, there were already humans there. Human skulls were there living with the Java man. So that could not have been the missing link. Humans were already there. This would have detracted, and he knew this. If he had revealed that there were two human skulls around the same place where he found this skull, it would have detracted from the readiness with which Java man would have been accepted as man's ancestor. The skull was an extinct ape or gibbon, and the leg bone turned out to be a leg bone of a man that he found 50 feet away, yet it was accepted for many years as the missing link. Piltdown Man. Piltdown Man was found in England. It was touted as the missing link. Here's the facts. Found in 1912 in Piltdown, England by Charles Daw Dawson and one of his associates, Arthur Keith. What did they find? They found a skull and a jawbone, the back of the skull and the jawbone, the dark jawbone on the bottom. Uh, however, the problem is it, it wasn't real. It was a hoax. Let me show, uh, hoax. Let me show you this video of the Piltdown Man discovery. Newspapers ran headlines. In social circles, they joyously celebrated this discovery. The British government, for their part, honored Arthur Keith with a knighthood as acknowledgement for his work on the Piltdown Skull. Then, in 1953, a scientist named Kenneth Oakley examined the fossil in detail and disclosed that it was in fact the greatest forgery of the 20th century. The fossil had been faked by attaching an orangutan jaw to a human skull. London Radio announced this fact in astonishment. Britain's August Natural History Museum is all a dither over a scandal concerning the Piltdown Man. One of the most famous fossil skulls in the world is declared to be in part a hoax. Forty years ago, its discovery was a sensation. Today comes the shocking news that this is skullduggery. For the evolutionists, the Piltdown Man scandal was only a beginning. In the coming years, other skulls were presented as proof of the ancestor of man. But later, each one of these proved to be either a fraud or a misinterpretation. 
It was determined that these skulls either belonged to extinct ape species or ancient human races. Despite this fact, evolutionists went even further and dared to present fossils of chimpanzees, orangutans, and even pigs as ancestors of man. Yet over time, they had to reject these fossils, to which they gave names such as Zinjanthropus, Ramapithecus, and Hesperopithecus. All right, so there you go. It took England by storm, but it turned out to be a forgery. And basically what that video says is, is true. It's either a human that's been degraded to be a missing link, or it's an ape or a chimpanzee that's been upgraded to be a missing link. But when they look at the evidence, fully human or fully ape, fully chimpanzee. Well, the Piltdown, it was discovered to be a hoax. All the facts you heard on the video, skull, 500-year-old man, jawbone, recently deceased ape. The teeth were arranged in a particular way, added to the jaw. Molar surfaces were filed. And all the pieces were stained to give an old appearance. It was a forgery. It was a hoax. The Peking Man, what was that all about? That was found in 1929 through 1937 outside of Beijing by a man uh, called Davidson Black. He found a number of skulls. Well, uh, what happened was as they began to look at that find and where it was found. Uh, they, they found this. The bottom line, the skulls were, were utilized as food for the people in that area. They would kill these chimps and eat the food from the skulls. Human skulls were also found in the same approximate area. It can't be a missing link if human skulls are there as well. The skulls between 1929 and 1937, 14 partial craniums, 11 lower jaws, have been found near Beijing, China in scattered little fragments. These skulls were bones of monkeys, not missing links, that had simply been used for food by these humans that lived in that area. So that eventually fell. The one that you hear a lot about today is Lucy. This is the one that was taught to my daughter in, in uh, <coughs> Lake Zurich High School. In fact, I remember she came home and her textbook said that Lucy was a chimp. But in the study sheet that the professor gave her, the teacher gave her, the answer that she needed to find was, what was the name of the oldest human ever found? And of course, the answer was Lucy. And I actually emailed the professor. We'd had dialogue going on throughout the semester. But... Uh, I said, you know, your, your study sheet says something that the book doesn't say. The book says, clearly it's a chimp. You say it's a human. Uh, it's a chimp. And uh, this is a, a famous find. 40% of, uh, of the skeleton was found. It's uh, just a chimp. It, it's nothing more. They will acknowledge it's just a chimp. But scientists have used this chimp because they claim, even though a great amount of the pelvis and hip was destroyed and into many, many pieces, they claim that this chimp walked upright, and so therefore must be in the lineage leaning to human beings. It was found in 1974 in Ethiopia by Donald Johansson, 40% of the skeleton. They gave it a fancy name, Australopithecus afarensis. Don't let those fancy names fool you, okay? Australopithecus simply means southern hemisphere. Afarensis simply means chimp or ape. That's all it means. Fancy names for these skeletons. 40% of it, no feet were found, no, no full hands were found. So they couldn't really tell if it walked on its hands or not. But simply because of the pelvis and the way it was shaped, at least they thought it was shaped because it was so badly destroyed into little pieces, they tried to reconstruct it, they say this chimp must have walked upright. Lucy, alias Australopithecus afarensis, had a skull very like a chimpanzee's and a brain to match. Now, if it has a skull like a chimpanzee's and a brain to match, to me, it's a chimp. It's not in the lineage of humans. Lucy's fossil remains match up remarkably well with the bones of a pygmy chimp that became extinct. Lucy's summary, Dr. Charles Oxnard, an evolutionist, said this, Oxnard's firm conclusion, the Australopithecines are unique, neither Lucy nor any other Australopithecine is therefore intermediate, it's not in the middle, between humans and African apes, nor are they similar enough to humans to be any sort of ancestor of ours. He's an evolutionist saying this, and yet this is taught to my daughter and your high school students like it's true, like it's fact. It's so sad. I mean, it breaks my heart to know that God's awesome creation is not being taught to our students. The missing links are still missing because they simply do not exist. The Bible clearly states, Then the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. Amen? Amen, Amen church. Let's bow our hearts in prayer before the Lord.